This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 483. I'm Mike Sork at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio here in the wonderful and wet Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I don't know what the hell season it is, but I literally started spring cleaning my house yesterday. Uh, so, uh, but we are here uh, ready to talk tech and we got a crew with us, not the usual crew. They're, they're busy doing other things. Uh, uh, producer Missy is off talking uh, uh, about podcasts on a panel somewhere but we got back with us it's cool because we got another professor of fancy pants tech pants uh crazy kraus wrong kraus i told you i was going to give you a new name of big bank pants. international esquire <laughs> yeah thanks um <laughs> sure great wonderful cool. welcome back with your does that make me part of the b team the b team yeah you know you got uh, the, the A team, they they're not here, so you called in the B team. You know, we're auditioning for an A team. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't know, uh, but no, thank you for being back on the show with your Apple phone. Yeah, we'll, and, talk and mm. we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. It's been mm-hmm. more than thirty days. Mm-hmm. Also, back with us. Speaking of Apple, you know, Miss Apple herself of the Awesome Cast. Hey, she everybody can't gets represent. a new, Everybody gets a new name tonight. <laughs> Amanda Narcissi is with us with Bold Pittsburgh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. We have, this is the perfect night to get. I, I, I'm like, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was okay. But he crossed back after his his experiment. Uh huh. And it was like, a, we got to get these kids back together mm-hmm. uh, for for this edition of the show. So, but we'll talk about that in a minute here. Of course, check out everything at awesomecast.com. Uh, where you can find past episodes, old interviews that we've done, some people that are worth a lot more money than they used to when they were in our basement. Uh, so <laughs> let's look at that list. Um, and uh, you can also subscribe to the podcast uh, there and on uh, your favorite podcast app. Look for the Awesome Cast. Pittsburgh Tech News usually helps with that because there's a couple other ones. That everybody wants to do an Awesome Cast every other month, it seems. And we we've outlasted them all. So I hope that counts for something. Uh, email us at awesomecast uh, at sorgatronmedia.com or probably just hit me up at mike at sorgatronmedia.com because I need to double check if that works. Tweet us at awesomecast. Uh, Facebook us, awesomecast on there. And we have a great Facebook group for the awesomecast uh, where a lot of the stories come through. Krauss was talking about how I don't need to add stories. You have a hundred in here. I've been sharing a lot this week. Uh, so that's how that happens. It actually comes directly from that. And, and a lot of times we have conversations on there in advance as well um and subscribe us on the instagram facebook youtube all that kind of stuff you can uh, also join us here live every tuesday uh on the awesome cast facebook page and on plenty of other uh streaming platforms but we do watch the facebook uh live chat as uh the most closely the most closely see i don't give a care about the closer i get to 40 the more i don't care about grammar uh <laughs> so uh, where uh, you can join us here, just like Dave Potter is hanging out in there, Michael Greathouse is hanging out in the chat room, and plenty more throughout the evening. And I haven't seen my mom yet in there. Uh, you can also, if you're catching <laughs> us later on one of those other platforms, sweet out awesome cast with hashtag AC483 to continue the conversation. And also, thank you to our audio partners, our friends at the405media.com that stream us every weekday at noon Eastern time, and our friends at Post Industrial Audio. Been doing a lot of fun stuff with them in this past week uh, out of awesome cast uh, that you guys are going to be able to hear very soon. Um, but uh, they, they are letting the world know or at least Pittsburgh know about some great Pittsburgh podcasts, including this one. So thank you to them for being great partners to the show, both of those sites there. Thank you to our other wonderful partners at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Our friends uh, supporting the show um, because they dig what's going on. At least I hope that's the reason. Maybe it's all a practical joke. Maybe somebody lost a bet. I don't know. All I know is that in the coffee club is Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore and John Carmen. And at the fan of the show level is Katie's favorite Fedor, Michael Fedor, and uh, the PGH Museum's 
Org, who have been doing some great stuff over there and some good interviews too. So please go check those guys out. Uh, you guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash awesomecast, where you'll find out this week, if you didn't catch the show live, um, my week my week's experiment with TikTok. So I think we I think last week I explained TikTok to Marta actually. Yeah, you did. So yeah, so there was there is that. Um, so we're we're having some fun over there, and there might be a new segment returning. I don't know if it'll be on the Patreon. Well, it will be on the Patreon for everybody probably. But uh, we were talking about that a little bit in the Slack. Anybody remember awesome tips? Yeah, mm-hmm. we haven't done them since uh, since Iron Man uh, Chilla took off um, <laughs> on the on the green screen. So uh, we uh, we're getting them back from space to do some more tips, perhaps. So we're, we're talking about doing that. I wonder how much authorization and clearance I have to get for that. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Did we did we just cause a problem? Oh no! Sorry about that. No, I might want to come do one. That's oh, why I said that. Oh, I would love go. to come do one or two, but I'd well, need some. Well, somebody clearance. else wants to sponsor the show. We're up for that too. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, it's time for our awesome thing of the week, and uh, Amanda has two of them. <laughs> I'm so, sorry. No, no, no. Today. Thank you. I need a minute. Go, I, I need a minute to breathe. Oh, so that first means I of go all, first. That, yes. Oh, Krauss doesn't even have anything in here yet. No. I was wondering why the doc was blank. <laughs> <laughs> Scroll down. Oh, That's where everything else is. Hmm. Anyways, you got one, including one toy. I, I actually did download today. Oh, yeah. The new Vimeo creator app. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. I actually downloaded it myself. So. I create a lot of Instagram like stories, mm-hmm. like probably every other day. What? I have a story. You with both Pittsburgh, yeah, got, with I mean, Pittsburgh goodness. on the Instagram. What's I just that? did one tonight, so I mean, goodness, <laughs> like on the way here. <laughs> um, literally at the event I was at, it was so funny. Like, like you know, city council is up there talking, and I'm over there like Instagramming. Like, that's, right. but that's did, what I'm supposed you did to do. What, a, a visit Pittsburgh event mm-hmm. and hopped on the train back to the studio to do the show. Yeah, I love our location. Yes, I do love this location just for that fact that I was like downtown and back mm-hmm. within like and being able to cover an event right in the middle of it all. Um, anyways, so I use a lot of tools because I don't want to just be the like boring Instagram to where I take the video, add a few like hashtags, this, that. So sometimes I do get creative. I use typically Adobe Spark mm-hmm. um, because what I like is that you could get different sizes for everything so it doesn't just have to be like an instagram story you can resize it to the square you can resize it to so you're Facebook talking about post. spark video um it's called spark post okay and then there's and spark do, video yes okay they're the same thing but one does still and yes. the other one does video i've done still and i also noticed sorry to take away from your thing a little bit but uh, i noticed that there is like movable things in there now mm-hmm. like if you look at you uh, animate it on mayhem show like when we did the uh, mayhem mania season with the pointing at the sign that i made like you see the text rolling in and everything so that was kind of a cool instagram extra anyways yeah i like that um But now Vimeo has joined this. So I guess they bought a company about a year ago. They bought a lot of companies. Um, Which is uh, is cool. I used to be a hardcore Vimeo person. Mm -hmm. Um, My old video blog was on Vimeo. I didn't touch YouTube with it for years. So I was way into Vimeo for a long time. And this, like, creator app was is great it literally like when i fired it up today there was a bunch of templates Mm -hmm. you could plug in your own videos but you could also just use their stock video work to just make add your own stuff to it it feels very um Mm. uh, adobe spark actually very very close to it and there's a web version oh see i didn't even dive into that part Mm. um and i do like i said i use adobe spark adobe video i use canvas Mm -hmm. like all these are kind of like the same unfold they all do the same thing just all a little bit differently um but this one i'm not i haven't dove into it yet but what i like is the stock video footage because sometimes i don't have anything yeah but i need to make sure i continuously post but it was a slow week like for example i'm just coming off my slow period where two months barely any stories but i had to still create content This was great. This would have been great because I could have just grabbed some stock video of food, talked about the 10 best cheeseburgers in Pittsburgh, and threw it up in an Instagram story. And it would have been great. 
So I'm going to dive a little bit more into this in the next few weeks. Um, and then I noticed somebody today when I put it up in the chat said there was another one that was released today. Mm -hmm. So there was two one, two of them released. Both from Vimeo? No, one from Vimeo and one was another one from a Momento. Okay. The company Momento, <laughs> which makes lenses for iPhones. Okay. They actually made an app now where you could do like vintage filters like right on the video and everything. Um, I, want, I need to go back and look it up which one it was because it was it was great. But um, and I should have had been more prepared for it. <laughs> but it was it, it it. There's a lot of new videos for this. There's going to be more, I think, mm -hmm. with the emerging of TikTok, Instagramming, and everybody's in a video now. Well, yeah, and it feels like it, it does feel like they they you know, Adobe's had their take. Uh, it, it, it everybody. Well, well, even though your filmix and and your and your things like that, with their you know, hey, download this app, pay two dollars, get all these filters and stuff. Like now your Adobe and your Vimeos are getting involved, right? Like it's kind of just build up to the big companies are getting behind it. Right. Plus I feel like Adobe's over cost is getting to be too much for creators. Yeah. So the $50 a month is kind of like a kick That's in a the big face is that, it, 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 is that what you need to do the Spark stuff? Now we have that for other stuff. If so. you want to unlock the backup system of right. it. But, so but what if I, I have pay, the cloud. Right. But what if Four. I pay like ten dollars for Rush or something? Like I, th I think there's a plan for that, or photographers or something like that, right? I really didn't dive into why the apps have a cost it can be bundled in. I think it's more the cloud sharing, yeah, being part of it. Because yeah. if I have Adobe Spark on my iPad and on my phone, mm -hmm. when I create it here, it automatically goes there. But then there's like premium, yeah, uh, templates and everything. But I like mean, that. I pay the highest because mm -hmm. I'm in in design, I'm in Illustrator, I'm in everything. So um, I, I wanted to bring up uh, so the other one that was brought up here. Oh, nine, that's it. Nine to five Mac had this, and uh, Potter actually posted it. Uh, it was a video up. He saw a story about it. It was Moment launches a retro RTRO uh, video app, uh, vintage vibes, and easy social media sharing. But this is what I'm talking about. They're like, the this, lens people, right? These Moment are the lens, lens people. Yeah. Okay, but this is like kind of more of a niche company doing uh -huh. this right. versus you have your Adobe's and your Vimeos building it in to their services. Mm -hmm. Like the Vimeo thing, I think mostly works if you have the premium account, which we happen to have. We were actually using Vimeo premium as a base okay. for what we stream here on tuesdays amongst other projects so like it's kind of a hey nice i get something else for all that money i pay for that right yeah you know plus so. that retro one looks more like it's just focused on the retro look right, which is right. in right now with everybody wanting oh, to look yeah. like they're from the 90s and oh, 20s yeah. and everything what? else it's Hi, we have this new technology, but let's make it look like we filmed on a VHS tape. Everybody going back to the <laughs> 90s. I was trying to get my ass out of the 90s. Well, that was Stranger <laughs> Things, right? Stranger <laughs> Things kind of started that The trend. 80s, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But so. I think that's funny. I'm like, we, we have all this new technology, but yet it looks like we filmed it on a beta. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it was with video eight. games, too. We all this. I, I got this <laughs> nice iPhone. And you know what I love playing on it? Sonic CD. Mm -hmm. Sonic the Hedgehog. But, you know, it's, it's, it's part of it, right? Kraus, do you have an awesome thing? Yeah, yeah my I, well, phone. There's, there's what's going on with you. There's this yeah. whole thing. Um, so, well, as you know, I came in here a over a month ago now and, and said that I decided to make the leap and live on the other side of the world. Thanks, <laughs> thanks to the Big, you know, thanks to Big China? Bank International, I have the ability to take my SIM and put it in this device and, mm -hmm. and live on the other side for a while. And um. I wanted to hate it, and I told you that before. I wanted to hate it, mm -hmm. but I don't hate it. And and there are little annoyances uh -huh. that make me wonder wonder why they do what why Apple does what they do. Mm -hmm. But there is way more benefits than there are. And and I know I, I my great house is going to give me a hard time, but mm -hmm. but seriously, I can't I can't find a reason. Well, I know I have a reason to go back. I have to do some testing on Android, so I will be going back to the S10 here in the next probably couple days. Um, but um, but seriously, the way they integrate together, the way that when I get my text messages, they come on the iPad. Um, 
it's just that seamless. Like I said, the browsers make me a little crazy. I was doing some testing with the new Microsoft. Microsoft released a new Edge browser, which I really don't have any complaints about. But the way Apple does their browser, I can't set Edge to the default. So anytime I get an email or something and it prompts me to open, you know, I click a, a link to open it, it. It's always going back to Safari. So that drives me crazy a little bit. Like, let I can't, you know, I can't set those things. It, I, I got a new title for you, by the way. Over oh here. boy, yeah, well, con- uh, Ron Carlson converted to Apple. Yeah, well, see, I don't know if I'm converted, <laughs> but uh, but uh, again, I don't, I don't like I said, I don't have any reasons. I wanted to have many reasons to hate it, and I mm-hmm, don't. Mm-hmm. So. There you go. I don't know if that makes me an Apple. Is that that's the, that's the official rule? That's the official tagline. Apple I phones. I don't actually. I don't. Hate I this. don't hate them. You no, know, <laughs> and I wanted to hate it. You know, because I mean, I'm I've been an Android guy for a long time. I was a Windows guy before that. You know, Windows Phone was my first love. I loved the Windows Phone. Um, you know, so I don't. Yeah, you know, that's about it. Amanda, do you have any 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 questions for the convert over here? How do you feel about the security at end of it? Oh, I I have no problems whatsoever. The face lock unlock is great, um, but then again, the the Samsung does the same thing. Right, it it works in a similar fashion. Um, now I had, do have more experience with the Pixel with the fingerprint on the back. Um, so that doesn't do the face and luck. It's a couple years old. Yeah. You know, it's a couple generations behind that way. Um, but for the vote, yeah, it's great. And did you get to play with the camera a lot? Oh yeah. Uh, but see again. And again, it's an iPhone the 11. Pixel, mm-hmm. Oh yes. It's the iPhone 11, not the 11 pro. Mm-hmm. Um, but the pixel camera, I, I've been in a world where the camera has been great for a really right. long time. Right. So mm-hmm. we have that talk a, a lot, yeah. a, a lot that some of us just buy the pixels to keep his cameras. Right. Um, and, and, and quite honestly, and I didn't buy phones, the pixel but... four because there were a lot of the camera is fabulous, but there were mm-hmm. lots of other reasons not to get it. Right. So mm-hmm. hopefully we'll see what happens with the five. Mm-hmm. Although I don't know if I'm buying it. I got to be honest. I don't right now. If I had to go out and buy a phone, I do not know what I would purchase. Which is rough because the new Samsung is out. And uh, I don't think I would buy that phone. And... I, I have many reasons for that. One of what, which the is Z-flip they're the... telling you it's a 5G device. No, the 20. And oh, it's okay. the 20. And yeah, it's the 20. Not a true 5G device. Yeah, there are no f- true 5Gs yet. The, the, the Pro version already. will be a true 5G device because it will have both radios in it. Mm-hmm. The the 20 and the 20S mm. are only have the 600 radio in them. They don't have the milli whatever radio in them. So it is not... It, while it will access the 5G band, it is not a true 5G phone. Which mm. the carriers are nowhere near even ready. Uh, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. nowhere near ready. No. I don't even think they're going to be ready by the fall, the way they're no. at. They're not ready. I'm not even sweating the 5G. My LT is right. plenty. Like, I am, yep. like, as a traveler. <laughs> not to mention, what is the cost of a 5G plan going to be? Mm-hmm. If we remember what happened when we went from. 3G to 4 to LTE mm-hmm. and the plan changes. What are those plan changes going to be like to mm-hmm. go? And, and all the heartache that people are going through right now where services dropping oh, in areas yeah. and people's phones are cutting mm-hmm. out. And I mean, you could be standing in downtown Pittsburgh with one bar mm-hmm. because of all of this. And it, it and a lot of feedback is like, it's not worth it right now. Mm-hmm. Like, what are mm-hmm. they doing? Mm-hmm. Don't forget. With 5G, they have to install all those yeah. micro mm-hmm. towers. Mm-hmm. So to get complete coverage, like downtown Pittsburgh, yes. In the next six months, you, if you had one of these phones, you might be able to walk into downtown Pittsburgh and see a 5G symbol. Good for you. But if how you... far outside of that right. little triangle yeah, yeah. 
Will you still see that five G? Then you just have the same phone you had before. Exactly, and then you still you still have the same phone you had before. Yep, that's perfectly. Yep. Do you feel better about your backup being Apple versus being Google? Hmm. Because that's what that's what got me to leave Android. I never tell that story. Really. I left Android when Google Circles came out because Google Circles published every photograph from my phone without my authorization. Oh. I had about 10 people in my Google Circles, and um, one of them contacted me, and they said, did you know all of your photographs from your phone are on there? And I was like, um, what? Wow. And I turn- it turned out it was something within the first few weeks <laughs> Google Circles was open. Yeah. Um, oh, I remember that. And yeah. they released everybody who had an Android's photograph and was backing up to Google into their circle. And it's not done because they just came out a few months ago. They they would somebody's like videos and or photos were being downloaded in somebody else's download. Right. Oh, like their their um what do they call it? the exit from there the one, yeah um takeout. Yes. Their their takeout downloads of their photos. Mm-hmm. I, and like it was mixing up the accounts. It's like, what are we doing, Google? Right. Like and you, you should, you should be good at this. And that's why I left Android. That's mm-hmm. actually the thing that I just finally said. I don't trust Google to have my stuff on my phone because mm-hmm. that's private. Mm-hmm. There were pictures of my kids. There was pictures of food and stuff, of course. But like, there's pictures of my kids as babies, and yeah, I yeah, yeah. am very overprotective of their digital footprint. Well, mm-hmm. of course, you yeah. Should be. And mm-hmm. for them to just release that without my authorization at the time, like, and we're talking, this is eight, nine, ten this, years this was, ago. This is the beginning still, of Google like, Plus, yeah, right. Yeah. But it's still like that's. But you still hear these stories, and it's not, insane. it's not any different. And you do not hear that as much. The things that you right. you hear about Apple, like somebody went through some shit to get to that stuff. And I do hear stories every yeah. day, but yeah. it's still like it's still few and far yeah. between. Yeah. It's not like that. I mean, in, in, in anecdotal, but the anecdotal still counts for something. Right. For, so to make you feel like you're on the right platform. That's what I'm. That was my biggest kid. Like with the security, is how mm-hmm. does people feel about Google backup versus interesting iCloud backup, hmm. which has no other access points other than your sign in. Well, I have a less threatening awesome thing of the week. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was and like, I got us very serious there for yes, a minute. Yes, bring it back around. <laughs> so we 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 watched, we watched the Mandalorian in here. Uh-huh. Everybody, you have. I'm, yeah. I'm not yes. all done. I'm not done. But you've seen but enough. I'm very you've close. Seen, I don't think anything in this article is going to spoil too much. Uh, so there was a special, um, and Gadget posted this, and actually it was uh, Industrial Light Magic did the video. But there's an article over on Engadget where they talked about so how did they do those wonderful sets and i think i heard something about how all the sets were digital or something like that the mandalorian used unreal engine for its real-time digital sets and it's more than that it's not just a green screen it's actually it's not a green screen at all so instead of that typical we're going to shoot in front of this thing and then we have to post and, and change all the color and everything like that what they actually did if i can skip over in the video so you guys can see this because you got to see the visual of this thing they are in a round room and the entire room, except for one opening, is a screen. So when you look and you see, like, you see a, a picture of a ship here, you see the backgrounds you wear, and it's in the hangar on that one ship in that one episode. You see the ceiling there, and you see the 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 the, the rocks in the background on that one planet on the desert planet. Like, so they're able to shoot and move that on the fly, reform mountains in Unreal Engine on an on a tablet. And shoot it, shoot foreground, like shoot natural in camera effects. Wow. Build sets close, put it, put the, the the background of everything in the background, change mountains, things like that. And and the, the set can move with them. So when they're doing vehicles, like sitting on a vehicle background whooshing by, like it's it's gives more of a realistic natural lighting effect to everything. It is fantastic. And it, it, they just had these. They built the sets into them. I don't think they left the studio for that entire series, which is amazing if that's true. Because That is very amazing. Because that show feels very outside. Yes, it right? does. Here's yes. a shot. Here's a shot of you know, some of the foreground rocks and, and everything. Um, hopefully it's not too much. Like, And here it separates out how much is the virtual. It's an LED screen in the background. Okay. 
and then the, you see there's physical sets in front of it, but the background, the, the like but the whole back, like going down the hall, uh, yeah, that is a video. It is a 360 room, more or less. It's still somebody created on a computer, but they projected it on this ginormous it just, screen. It's just on the screen, yeah. Yeah. So that had to cut production cost greatly. You only have to build so much. Yep. Mm hmm. And the rest is computer generated, Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. was some person stressed out, probably with a lot of coffee and (laughs) cigarettes, like sitting there in front of a a computer. Imagine the set, the the (laughs) shot list planning. Right. Like, okay, this background needs to have this. this, Typically, I'd like to see the blooper reel. But typically, (laughs) you would shoot it. And then put in the background. It added right. in so later. So now right. you're doing that. Like I don't like that rock over there. Move it here. Like and you pull it out, and, and they, they show them reforming drop. the rock and everything. It, this is like this is freaking cool. And of course, it's industrial it probably light gives magic. the director a whole lot more. Oh yeah, like you 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 literally have a let's fix the set design right now. I don't like how this looks because you're literally looking in the camera now and seeing how it looks. Right. Versus imagining that thing on a pole over here is is you know the thing everybody's looking at. We can put that on a screen. Right? I also like that the story's coming out now when they don't have anything else to talk about with the Mandalorian except for the <laughs> baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. Except for the baby, like the baby. I, I about like the it made a hit at the toy fair in New York City last oh, weekend. Of course. And um, Build a Bear is all gearing up for the the baby to be released. That's in gonna the wreck. Build, that's gonna wreck Build a Bear. Um, yeah. You ever see a line in front of Build a Bear? You will. You will. You will. Yeah. It's just down from the Apple store in mm-hmm. our mall. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, from that, hey, I want to give a shout out something else awesome. Our good friends down at, down the road here in uh, in in Beachview at Slice on Broadway. Uh, they help feed us. So we were munching. We were trying to. You know, we were we were we were we were halting a little bit because we need to finish munching our pizza. So we're good and energized up to do our podcast to bring the awesomeness to you every week. Four locations in the Pittsburgh area, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, though, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the pe- perfect pepperoni pizza with the majority of our 10 years as the awesome cast. Jeez. Wow. 10 years. I'm a long relationship kind of a guy <laughs> with projects. Uh, so thank you to them. Check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. All right, let's uh, see what we got here. You guys have been putting some stories over there on the Awesome Cast Facebook group. Of course, hey, just had brunch with my buddy Chachi the other day and asking how the game journey uh, .com is going for him. Um, he is still going with it. He is deep into the um, the the uh, Nintendo, the mobile, Nintendo DS, things like that. He's on Advance Wars, Game Boy Advance stuff, Mario Kart DS. Um, oh, Wait, Brain Age, the brain training game, is in this list for a thousand games to play before you die? I guess it's technically a game, but why is it all like Barbie Horse Adventures isn't a part of this? I think that's that, hol- that I'd I'd want to see that. You want to see that? <laughs> I want to. We watch we should just throw a Twitch a Twitch stream of you know, yes. I talk about how he just started Twitch streaming him writing, playing and writing the games. But he doesn't like show you what he's writing or show you what he's playing. It's just him sitting there, and people are watching it. So the camera's at the wrong angle. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not that the exposed angle. At least like the little bit I've seen of it, and I'm just like, all right, if it works, cool. So, anyways, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Producer Missy actually put in in this section since she's not here, since she's busy, uh, part of the Misfits panel tonight. Uh, the Tale of Two Cities. So, so there's a new nonprofit that that's looking to grow the San Francisco pipeline to uh, in Silicon Valley. Oh no, I have to register on Post Gazette uh, to Pittsburgh, and I can't read the rest of the article because I'm not logged in. <laughs> so, um, thanks, Post Gazette. Well, we won't talk about that one. But no, I mean that's part of. It. I know a lot of people that do like clients in new york from pittsburgh and things like that so but uh let's see what else we got here potter uh through uh apple weighs in on users uh this is kind of a rumor side i think a little bit but uh apple's weighing in on letting users switch default phone apps to rivals i think that that headline's a little loaded but I, we're talking about like i didn't understand it 
the, the, I think we're talking about yeah, like cha- you changing your browser, changing your email app. Yeah. Like I want the default to be Gmail, <laughs> which most apps people do that already. Well, you can do that with people some do apps. That already. Well, uh, the browser is an issue, isn't it? Yeah. You can take off the browser, <clears throat> okay. and you can take off. Like you have to literally delete the app and put the other app on it. Okay, but I you can, can, I can do, do that it. with Safari. I don't. I haven't tried to erase Safari lately. So the problem I see is even though but I the mail app happens all the time. I, I've set Chrome as a default, mm-hmm. and it's um, if I'm d- in other apps that like, hey, open this in a browser, it goes to Safari. Yep. Right. Uh, that's that's the so, behavior. Right. I've seen I mean, too. it's not. I mean, it doesn't bother me too much, but it's still like uh, I kind of want right. it just to be Chrome, so I have all that history in one place. The right? m- mail app, definitely, we do that all the time. Mm-hmm. We take it off the native mail app and put yes. on Gmail, Yahoo. Um, I don't use. I didn't use it for the longest time. I used Chuck instead. I used a, a third party mail app. Mm-hmm. I use. Uh, I've used a couple third-party mail apps instead of the native one on iPhone. So the mail app, it's no, like I don't, I don't know about a rival one. Like they're all quirky in their own way. Mm-hmm. It's just an aggregator, really. But I use like Chuck and stuff. Yeah, but I guess you can't take Safari off. Yeah, you can't take Safari off. Huh? <laughs> I guess I never really and, tried. And again, and as this article is talking about, as you click through things, like if you just like, I have a even. Unless it's like a Google Gmail thing, <laughs> they for they will they can push you to go to another Google thing. Right. Yes, or right because you, if you're in right. Docs, yes, if you're in Google Docs, it will actually prompt and say, "Hey, do you want to open this link in Chrome or do you want to open this link in Safari?" Right. Yeah, but it won't give you the option to open in it anything. in another browser. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, we'll see. It looks like kind of more pontification than anything. There was no comment from Apple or anything. This is a Bloomberg article, by the way. So uh, there's a lot of it feels kind of link. <laughs> it feels kind of link baity. Uh, let's see, uh, Ponder also shares his official no refund for the uh, Mobile World Conference um, exhibitors. That just killed a conference. Is that I think did they cancel that? conference due to the uh, the coronavirus the, the yes. coronavirus because they canceled about four tech conferences over that now yes overseas yes. uh including i think a game developer conference is, right. i don't know is it canceled yeah i know i know a lot of big ones pulled so out they're not conference. refunding the vendor money yes ouch why were they still at fault for the venue i don't know like uh, they may not have the money because of the venue and everything too so like that's what my real question is if they would have not been able uh, like contractually what does the current the contracts say that yeah the signed, there's but. probably some kind of indem- that's like act of god at that point so they, they probably protect themselves from that so <laughs> yes. but still i mean that kind of I, I i you know but you know they keep saying you know this really hurts the smaller vendors that need to be in a room with important people to, to get their stuff out there than anybody else uh, i don't think they're coming back next year so i mean hey, we'll see what happens with all this but uh, you don't think mobile world congress will be back next year I, will they after well hey let's see how everybody does after they just announced all well, the phones that's, today yeah that's true if people if people don't go to this thing and spend all this money on this and they don't see a hit your sony's your samsung's yeah, your right. big ones if if they're not coming back i yeah, mean it's over. it you're might right. still be there but it's it's yeah yeah well, we but, need to be honest for about five seconds and just realize how much the tech world is in trouble due to this mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. stocks are plummeting plants are closing yes it's just it's 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 like a tech thing oh it's it's a big tech thing Mm -hmm, it's gonna mm -hmm. suffer it's it's slowly rolling downhill and it's it's gonna pick up momentum real so now it's gonna be interesting to see you know other than the other you know factors going into that this is a a worldwide pandemic virus that's happening like now the companies have to be smarter about things right um you know multi-sourcing from countries etc i mean i think about every time that um um something happens in taiwan and the memory computer memory prices go up right right now this is kind of everything so everybody put their eggs in one basket and then something happens to that basket there you go and they're once the basket gets a hole here. you're in trouble <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But, uh, the, my basket is on fire i don't know <laughs> <My basket laughs> what to do about this oh we just came up with the show name <laughs> quick somebody write that down my, my basket, basket is, is on, on fire. fire oh so don't actually hate it isn't gonna work 
My basket is on fire. Um, My basket full of eggs is on fire. <laughs> so, uh, so both both Riz and I apparently posted this one. Hasbro is relaunching classic Tiger electronic gaming handhelds. Okay. Now, now I love. We're back to I the was retro. just I was just recently um, watching a video talking about how bad Tiger electronic handhelds were. Now I grew up on Tiger electronic handhelds. I got a pinball game and a Terminator game and one of the Konami ones that, uh, that that was a Ninja Turtles game and stuff like that. I have fond memories of this, but also it was in lieu of getting a Super Nintendo, I realized. Uh, so... Uh, that was going to be my question. Who needs this? Somebody with the memories, man. My mother, no. my mother would not allow me to get the Double Dragon Tiger Electronic game. You know why? Why? Because she read a story That's or heard on the news a story about how two kids fought in a playground because of Double Dragon. That's violence. You know, I have fond memories of the Namco football with the hashes and the zeros. Oh, it was Mattel. That was or Mattel. Or the Mattel. Oh, sorry. yeah. Those but, ca- well, those but do came, I need those, one today or am I going to go Madden? play Madden? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know what I mean? No, 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 like, no, 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 no. I still got one. And I kind of like picking that ever up every once in a while. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. So I, I think the person who's going to use these is the person that hacks it into a Raspberry <laughs> Pi and puts it up on TV. Uh, well, I, I, is that going to work in that some way? way. Um, I, gonna, well, I, I, have, okay. I have friends who take apart Game Boys. I'm not going to name any names, but I work with a, a, I work with somebody. They literally buy <laughs> old Game Boys and disassemble them and reassemble them. So, so they're they're and literally like that's what I picture this. Also, being. remember this isn't like a projected screen. It's right. an LCD with with like, like stay in place graphics yeah. that basically light up depending on where you're at. Right. You know, for those not familiar with this, so here's what here's it. So they're releasing four of these, re-releasing four of these. There's a Transformers Generation Two, <laughs> a game. Um, there's a little, is Little Mermaid coming out again? Shit. Oh boy. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and X-Men Project X. There's still going to be a way to hack it and make it into something different. You, you could just unscrew the back. And you could potentially do, do it, recreate digitally the background and the LCD, just, right? Yeah. And then just the controls kind of. I have of a Nintendo Switch. And, yeah, you have. Why do I need this? Next, the Nintendo Switch retro. will have Tiger Electronics life. games on it. Okay, that I could. Uh, I could. Yeah. I now just don't understand. I, I had a Batman based on I the get movie. The whole retro thing, watch but game. I don't. These were horrible. I had a Tiger Electronics watch with Batman came on it. Yeah. Yes. And you hate it. Did you love it? Does this mean I that I'll be lot. able to you get my it. Nokia phone back soon? Your, your what? <laughs> my Nokia phone back soon with Snake. <laughs> with Snake. Nice. Well, I mean, it's on the Apple Watch, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna come full circle. I, it, honestly, it's a whole retro thing. Is yes. these. Kid, the, the kids are finding our old gaming systems that are in the addicts places. But this is in so, the gaming system. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, no, 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 no. I spent a lot of time, a lot like, of car trips oh, on these guys. Cool. Oh, and they're yeah. going to re- replicate it. I don't know. It, or they're just... Or what's going to happen is these big companies are running out of ideas mm-hmm. and they're just grasping at straws already... and figure like, hey, guess what? The millennials aren't spending money on video games. Guess who is? The Gen Xers and... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of us Later old dudes. and earlier boomers, and so what's happening is they're spending the money on the video games where the millennials are not, and so therefore they're appealing to us. St- Steve of Old Pittsburgh Sports, I rest uh, my case. Uh, has Contra and Ninja Turtles. <laughs> 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 yes, those were the cool ones that when Konami uh, did them because it was a different shape and stuff. But uh, you know, whatever. Um, no, that's no, no, it, right yeah, there. It's they're, stuff. <laughs> They're yes. appealing to the Gen Xers and the early boomers. There was a That's ma- all there is. Yeah, you know, the, the, the back in the days, I had a stack of these. You know, mm-hmm. I stuck one to school, and got like the only time I got grounded was because I snuck one out, and then it fell out of my jacket when I got home on the bus, and my mom found out. <laughs> she on tonight? <laughs> um. Anyway, childhood truth. Yes. Yes. <laughs> The only time I, I, that I recall getting grounded. Uh, so, anywho, um, yeah, no. So that that's happening. Uh, have you seen the retro section lately? It's like we are taking. Hey, here's Mortal Kombat One or Burger Time in an arcade unit, like 
like three inches tall, or I saw one that you could actually put on your keychain. I'm like, am I playing this? And you look at it. It has Rampage on it. It has a full emulator of this video game in a stand-up arcade hanging on your keychain. What are we doing? (laughs) I miss miss my Tamagotchi. (laughs) Tamagotchi. Don't you? That needs to be on my Apple Watch. How about I want a Tamagotchi on my Apple Watch? There you go. Oh, there there has to be some out there. Maybe I haven't not researched it yet. I feel like there's. I just want an alert in the middle of my day to tell like that my animal pooped. (laughs) Well, there's. I was. uh, There was a cat game that we used to play where you 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 get the cats. It was all in Japanese at the time, but they do have an English version now. I um, I forget the name, but we never knew the name of it because it was in Japanese. And you you put out food and play things and, and you can buy things and, and and there's just a couple of scenes. Now it has an Apple Watch app where you can pull up on your watch and see the scene to see if any cats have come by. Wow. There's your Tamagotchi right there. I do. I just want an alert that says my cat pooped. <laughs> there was no cat cleanup I'm aware of in this game. <laughs> That's uh, that's for the sequel. You could just get a real cat. I do have a real cat. Okay. And I still don't get alerts when it poops. I need that in my litter box. Yes. Hey. <laughs> An automated litter box that alerts your them. watch when it's Listen, full. you know our trash cans in Pittsburgh have uh, sensors on them? Yeah. When they're full, yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they've talked about we had the um, what is she, the controller or something um, um, yeah. is on broadcast this week. I just added it today. And yeah, there's sensors that, you know, so they know if the trash can's 80%, if it's empty, the car is not going to stop to go pick it up. Nice. And that saves them a bunch of time because they're not, they're not checking for empty trash cans across the city. So they're only stopping it, the quote ones, unquote, the ones that, ones need, that need it. Yeah. 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 So awesome. Our, our, our technology city. Uh, hey, you know, you know what else is a lot of technology here? Sidekick Media Services housed uh, in the wonderful Sorgatron Media Studios in Beachville, Beach, Beachview, Pennsylvania. An easy train ride from downtown, just like Amanda just found out today. We do a lot of great things. Uh, let us be a sidekick in your superhero project, helping out with a lot of things, filling in, filling in the gaps for some people in the next couple of weeks on uh, that needed a podcast uh, producer because theirs was out of town, uh, helping out with a lot of great projects, uh, filling in, some, doing some uh, event videos, uh, doing some uh, uh, conference videos. And, of course, we're getting ready to head out there with our friends at SAE for Aero Design in the next couple weeks and uh, Baja and all those great things that you guys are wondering where in the country I am if you're following my Instagram. Uh, so looking forward to that and working with our great, great clients out there. If you got if, if you got something that you your next big thing and you need a sidekick for that, that superhero project let us know sidekick media services.com okay guys what do you want to hit up on the back of the book here kraus i see you got a story here oh we were talking about this before the, on, yeah, before the, before show. the show do you want to talk about that yeah let's get into that so phil spencer uh put out an article what you can expect from the next generation of gaming mm-hmm. and, you know microsoft came up with their lovely term teraflop so uh, mm-hmm. the next Xbox is twelve That's of those teraflop units of measure. Twelve of those mystery units. What? So we don't know what a teraflop is. Well, to put it's it in like- in perspective, they're saying um, it's delivering four times the processing power of the Xbox One and enabling developers to leverage. 12 teraflops of GPU, and that's a, you know, the graphical processing unit, twice that of the Xbox One X, and eight times the original Xbox One. So it's a much more robust. It's a lot more. That's all we need to know. It's It's a a lot lot more. I had an original Xbox, so I'm thinking, like, man, I was really blown away by that. lovely term, ray tracing. Yes. Ray tracing will be there. I've seen ray tracing on Quake 2. It's amazing. Um, Uh, Amanda, when they announce the new specs for an iPhone, and you get that chart about how much more powerful the one is from the before. (laughs) Yeah, which is always... Interesting because, like, I remember the one from the 11 because it was like the 11, and then the 10 was like this much shorter, and then the 8 yeah, was right. like this much shorter. So, do you, okay. do you really like? I, I don't know what, the, like, they say some kind of figure in there, some unit or of they measure. just say eight times faster, right? Pretty much, I, 
is such an arbitrary unit. It's weird. Or it's marketing speak, it's right? It's weird. It's everybody <laughs> does this, mm-hmm. and and this is how Xbox does theirs. This I just is, like that they named it something like Teraflop. <laughs> yeah, right. I want that on a t-shirt. But then they talk about like there's going to be the, the SSD storage, um, quick resume, things like that. HDMI 2.1, all that good stuff. All the stuff mm-hmm. we're kind of expecting. So I have to give, um, I think it's Gamertag Radio. It's another podcast that I listen to. And they were having an interesting discussion about the whole, you know, who's going to lead the next generation. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's worried about who's going to win. And I think it's interesting. the, the, The concept they brought up was, okay, so I believe somebody put out an article and I can't, I don't remember who it was, but. They were saying that all the components for the next PlayStation were going to cost, because of what's going on in China and everything with memory and things like that, that they were looking at $450 per box. That's just hardware cost. Mm -hmm. So they're assuming that the next PlayStation will come in at $500. They expect Microsoft... To Xbox s- One was five hundred dollars when it launched with an with right. The so ex- if that's their hardware cost, so they're only making a profit margin of like a hundred dollars a rem- unit. But but remember, um, in the video game world, you, you don't game. make money on hardware. You make no. it on the software. You make yes. all the money on software and accessories. And accessories. When, uh, to the point where um, uh, the family that works at Walmart, and I believe when they get a console, it's not. I don't think they get as big of a discount because of that yeah. margin. Like even I don't think store gets a lot of margin on it either. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, and in fact, the it, it's a it's a story that's been going on for years. The original Xbox 360, Microsoft sold at a loss. That was the original. Yeah, I was gonna say I purchased mine for like three. Right. Yeah, yeah. I thought the original Xbox and I had or the, the original. I'm sorry, the original OG yeah. Xbox probably, when probably they got the into well. gaming. Microsoft actually sold that console at like they lost a hundred or a hundred and fifty dollars it was per unit. A six hundred megahertz PC C, right. in what two thousand two? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. remember. It was after Dreamcast. But well, they literally that. sold it at a loss to get yeah. into the ga- gaming s- oh. market. Sony is not equipped to do that. Right. Because they don't have as many right. they don't have they don't like, have as many teraflops. They don't have as many teraflops of <laughs> bankroll <laughs> yeah. to uh, uh support a, a play like that. But, oh, but again, so but so gamer tag radio speculated because um, I don't know. Do you know what Game Pass is? Yes. Okay. So Xbox has this feature called Game Pass. Right. Mm-hmm. And so they speculated. So if Xbox releases their next console at $50 cheaper and then says, oh, and by the way, when you buy this console, you are going to get three, six, nine, 12, whatever that number might be of Game Pass included. Like months? Yes. Oh, okay. Would that be the dagger yes. in Sony's heart? Yes. Because then literally, because don't forget, with Game Pass, every first party game that is released goes directly to Game Pass. So you're saying I spend $450 for this next console and for the next year, every single first party release game I get included in that cost. So, it, like I said, it's all speculation. We don't know mm-hmm. if it's actually going to happen or anything. Mm-hmm. I just think it's an interesting conversation. And I do wonder have. if Sony would also do a loss leader on that, on their side, even just to play ball and give you a, a few months because they have a similar thing with PlayStation They do have Plus. a service. Yes. But don't forget, too, the Xbox One X, they're saying... Co- backwards compatibility continues. So mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. the Xbox right, right now, you know, you take a 360 game and shove it to day. De- if it's backwards compatible, it'll play. I'm wondering. I wonder and if that's going to continue. And, and I wonder if they'll open that up even more. Right. Like, instead of because it's a per game kind of patch. I yes. guess. Yeah. Because like, it is some. Because I, I I was trying to pull up my old Assassin's Creed mm-hmm. games. You put them in if they're compatible. You don't install from the disc. No, it downloads, it downloads a it. special version yeah. for the Xbox One of your game. 
Yeah, you just put the disc yeah. in to prove that you yes. quote unquote own the game. Yes. So 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 that so if we're doing that not individually and just building into the console from the start, because Xbox did not do that with the one. If they go from the start and say, Hey, we just can recognize Xbox 360 and original Xbox games. Now your stack of games that are I put aside because they're not on my 360 or my Xbox One can all play. Right. Potentially. 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 But at least the ones in the store now, you will be able to play. Right. I just also wonder what's going to be the tech downfall of it. So, like, we didn't have the Red Ring of Death on Xbox until, like, a no, year No, 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 no. Xbox just, just uh, misread so, their audience and uh, said that everybody needs to be online all the time or they might lose their copy of Assassin's Creed or that uh, uh, they play, did a big play for TV instead of video games. Right. right. That, and they made well, you get they were trying and to make they, it an entertainment And they made console. you get a connect with every console. Mm-hmm. That's what killed it. That's what killed it. I just feel like every time that there's like these video game wars that come out in mm-hmm. like October, November, right in time for Christmas, right? Right. Um, that yeah, award Christmas come, time. Yeah. <laughs> usually by February, we hear about their major hardware failure. Yeah, there's usually like, something, but it, of it, something. I don't think anything has been as bad as the Red Ring of Death. Though. No, I don't yeah. think nothing. No, yeah, no. no. It was I mean, bad. I eventually I was, suffered I listen, the Red Ring of Death. It took four was, years, but I had. The I Red was Ring of victimized death by the years. Red Ring of Death. <laughs> Are you recovered, sir? I uh, get, I have saw some therapy for this. Okay. I, actually, I think I did have the red ring around when I had my depression too, so it mm-hmm. actually could have been connected. I'm just uh, shocked I had it four years later. Like yeah. I had it. Oh yeah, mine lasted. Year. Like my Xbox uh, lasted for a while. Mine lasted two, I think, mm-hmm. um, because I went. I was looking through something because I swore I bought. Listen, I thought I bought the Scott Pilgrim versus the World video game, and it says that I just have a trial when I went back to download. So I'm trying to find a receipt for it. Uh, but I did find my send in your Xbox to get replaced situation. Nice. So there was that. Um, and now I have yeah, to. And another thing, too, what I think is kind of interesting, what Microsoft is doing with this next version of the console is, you know, they're really, you, you know, because like Microsoft as a whole, as a company, if you've noticed mm-hmm. recently, they don't care where you are or what you're doing. Just so long as you're using Microsoft applications, they're good with it. It's a completely role reversal for them, you know, because before it was, oh, you want the best? Yo, yo, yeah, you can use uh, Office on your Android device or you can use Office on your iPhone, but mm-hmm. the best place to get it is on a Windows PC. Yeah, yeah. You know, they've dropped all that stuff now. Yeah. They don't really care what device you're using just so long as you're using their stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're really, it really seems like in with this next generation, the same thing's going to happen for video games. Mm-hmm. They don't care where you're playing the video games just so long all as you're be, playing. And even most of it's going to be on the cloud too. Exactly. So I think it's just going to be your Xbox is going to be, that's the thing you want, you have if you don't, Want to depend on the internet? Yeah, can't depend on the internet because of where you're at, or or you, or you know, just don't high, have the technology. Or it's your high end thing. Mm-hmm. When like, hey, we need a bunch of consoles so we can play Rocket League uh, <laughs> uh, on Twitch. Right, right. Like your LFG is going to have a bunch of them because they're doing high end stuff with it. By the way, shout out looking for group. I was I was had my two TV situation I talked about off air and, while I was cleaning the other day through XFL on the one to see what that was about and just channel surfed on on Twitch on Sunday. On the other, uh, testing out my old original Fire Stick, by the way, uh, Amazon Fire TV Stick, which works great um, until it didn't. Uh, but uh, but I flipped through and happened to come across our friends looking for group over in Bank or yeah, uh, Brookline, sorry, mm-hmm. uh, doing a Rocket League live stream, and it was fantastic because I was having trouble finding something I could tolerate. Because <laughs> some stuff on Twitch, I don't know if you flipped through. Uh, it's rough sometimes yes and and then they were doing a great like competition it looked like a full like and, and i work we worked with these they do a lot of the big stuff for the competitions over at uh, uh replay effects and everything by the way i got a preview of the stage a couple weeks ago wow this is gonna be fun uh so mm, this will um, be there i go then well yeah you oh you haven't been not yet 
Hey, wait, I, 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 I've I, never been. I got a little bit of quick housekeeping. Uh, uh, first of all, because Steve was asking about, um, uh, so Aww. what about people like me in trash cans? Uh, uh, I forget to bring out my trash can. <laughs> no, we're true. talking about the city trash cans, like the municipal ones, like in front of the IGAs and on the sidewalks and stuff like that. Not yours. The ones downtown. Yeah. Not yours. Yeah. No, well, there's one across the street because okay. they speed up to it every night when I come out after podcast. Night. I'm like, oh, hi, guys. Um and oh the other thing dave potter shared this because amanda you were asking about this situation how about your um connected litter box it <laughs> there is a, you go for a, a litter hyphen oh, robot dot com dollars five hundred dollars is a litter oh. robot three connect a five hundred dollar cat toilet wow the highest rated wi-fi enabled automatic self-cleaning litter box for cats i'm glad we had to clarify that never don't use it with your alligator uh never sca- <laughs> scoop cat litter again while giving Kitty a clean bed for litter no. for each use, no. Litter Robot comes with a 90-day money. I don't know why I'm reading their copy, but it's great. My question is, what happens oh. when you get drunk and pee in it? Um, whoa! We know that happens. You get that drunk? Houses. Let's send them a let's. You know what? Let's tweet them and ask. <laughs> Well, let's find out their Twitter account. I'm going to make a note here <laughs> since I'm have no producer tonight. <laughs> Uh, tweets. Wow. Litter That's a whole robot. other level of drunk. I'm robot. sorry. But I've had friends that I mean, did that. I'm not wanna... saying it happened in my house, Although, but I've seen it. for $500, never to have to touch the litter again? The opening is so small, though. I don't get why the opening is so small. Cats, like, don't want to be in confined areas like that. That's what the only thing Look, that think. cat is having a good time. <laughs> My cat. Was My that, cat was that scared. cat talking to God? What is happening here? The cat's like, thank you, God, for my five hundred dollar litter box. Yes, yes. My parents love me so, My, uh, oh, so much. Oh God, there's a video. Yeah, there's a video. Oh, we're zooming in. Okay, it's just the um, buttons. Okay. It's just oh, the buttons. Look, wait, wait, the is that, poop. wait, is that what it looks like? That's not what the poop oh my looks God. like. So it turns, then the poop gets discarded. Okay. And then because it looks like a giant wow. egg it on turns a swivel. Back, wow. And then the litter's there. Wow. Oh, and you just pull the drawer out, and that's where you pull. Okay. Oh, there's testimonials for oh, five hundred bucks. Man, it this is gonna be, be a whole yours. other show, guys. We only have a couple minutes before we're not Instagram worthy anymore. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> we have to we have to stay under an hour so we can post on Instagram for that thing going on oh uh amanda Narcissi, what's going on real quick uh bold pittsburgh everywhere there you go crazy like... kraus i just will go to work every day and come <laughs> home and do it all over again Play my apple apple thing <laughs> yeah, that's right apple apple <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Again, please go check out everything at awesomecast.com. Find all the linky links to get wherever you need for us and become part of that conversation on Twitter and over on the uh, Awesomecast Facebook group. Thank you guys. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.